Hi, it's Katrina. From humpbacks versus orcas to lions versus hyenas, here are 10 of the fiercest rivalries in the animal kingdom. Number 10. Polar Bear vs. Walrus With the heaviest polar bear coming in at only half the size of a walrus, you might think the tusked and flippered walrus would come out on top. The truth is, polar bears are the ones who prey on walruses. But how do they do it? When walruses come ashore to rest, polar bears often plot an attack, chasing them back into the sea. Doing this repeatedly is a way to separate the weaker and older walruses from the bunch. Sometimes, younger walruses are trampled by older ones in their mad dash to make it back into the safety of the water. That makes the polar bear's job easier because they only have a 10% kill rate and depend on the element of surprise. But walruses do have another defense mechanism other than their size, those saber-like tusks. They use them to deliver harsh blows, often causing injuries that prove to be fatal to polar bears. Number 9. Mongoose vs. Snake While the mongoose might look cute and cuddly, sometimes, it takes a lot of grit to take on a venomous snake. This long-bodied, bushy-tailed animal is a carnivore and one of their greatest rivals is the cobra, as you know if you've heard the story of Ricky Tikki Tavi. Mainly found in southern Asia, Africa, and Europe, there are over 30 different species of mongoose. With a healthy appetite for meat, the mongoose feeds on birds, rodents, insects, you name it. But they have also been known to kill and eat venomous snakes. They ain't scared. You might think that when a mongoose and snake come face to face that the snake would win. With its quick movements and dangerous venom, snakes are no doubt a threat. But the mongoose is not only agile, but fearless. Able to survive snake bites, they have a special type of receptor in their bodies that stops snake venom from binding to their blood. Their tough coat and superb hunting skills help them to overcome the fiercest of snake competitors. Number 8. Shark vs. Dolphin There are many stories of dolphins saving humans from sharks. These two do not get along. Dolphins vs. Sharks seems to come down to brain vs. brawn. Very few shark attacks on dolphins have been observed, but researchers from the Dolphin Communication Project in the Bahamas have been studying the shark bite scars on dolphins. Tiger sharks and bull sharks seem to be the main culprits, with the youngest dolphins having the most marks. So sharks appear to target the calves. Sharks may be tough, but dolphins are clever and know how to exploit the soft spot of their cold-blooded rivals. Dolphins will use their tough snout to attack sharks from below, ramming their soft underbelly. With this strategy, they are able to not only stun the shark, but sometimes these blows have been known to render them unconscious. If two or more dolphins attack a shark like this, it could be fatal. Dolphins also have the protection of their pod. When a dolphin is at the risk of being attacked by a shark, the pod springs into action and surrounds the threatened member, slapping their tails to confuse and scare off the shark. Sharks are probably better off going after something easier. Number 7. Crocodile vs. Hippo One of the most ferocious rivalries in nature is the one between the crocodile and the hippopotamus. Both are dangerous and powerful animals that are highly territorial. Let's look at hippos first. Hippos are considered the most dangerous animal in Africa, more than sharks and snakes, since people often come into contact with them in the rivers as they are fishing and washing clothes. A fisherman in Senegal describes them as evil monsters that attack villagers night and day. Many have died and many more are injured as fishermen go out onto the water to retrieve their fishing nets. According to National Geographic, a male hippo's mass coming at you is about the same as two football teams combined. Hippos can weigh anywhere between 3,500 pounds and 6,000 pounds or more. They are very fast in the water and reports of marauding hippos happen every year, trampling and goring people who get too close dragging them into lakes and tipping over their boats, eliminating them with just one bite. And remember, the hippo is an herbivore. Because hippos and crocodiles share the same habitat, they not only cross paths, but they get involved in confrontations that can leave one or the other injured. The Nile crocodile also has a reputation of a fierce man-eater. Africa's largest crocodilian can weigh a max size of about 20 feet and weigh almost 2,000 pounds, still nowhere near the size of an adult hippo. The difference is that the crocodile is a carnivore, an ambush predator that sits and waits for its meal. Crocodiles usually attack to kill and will eat pretty much everything. It's believed that crocodiles kill between 200 to 700 people a year in Africa alone, although many attacks go unreported. So between these two giant animals, when it comes to territory and competition, how do they get along? 
it is a nervous truce that helps them coexist. While a crocodile would happily go after a baby hippo, it has the whole herd to deal with, and the adult crocodile is no match for the average-sized adult hippo. But sometimes animals get cranky living in close quarters, and crocs get hungry, and hippos get mad. In 2009, a crocodile in Tanzania got too close to hippos bathing in the river. It suddenly panicked and ended up running across the backs of the hippos. Bad decision. It got stuck in a labyrinth of hippos that started to encircle the croc and take turns biting it. It had no chance of escape. In 2017, a visitor to a national park in South Africa witnessed an incredible display of hippos saving a wildebeest from a croc attack. When the crocodile grabbed the leg of the wildebeest, a pair of nearby hippos jumped to the animal's rescue and charged the croc until it let go. Still, it's a bit of a toss-up when it comes time to predict who would win out in a battle one-on-one. -on -one. Crocodiles have a firm, powerful bite that could cause some serious damage and are apex predators. There is a reason they are still at the top of the food chain, but they most likely would want to go after something a little less challenging. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And now for number six, but first, big shout out to Jonathan Yaconiello and Dave Woods. Thanks for your nice comments, and of course, I'd love to get five stars. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number six, hornets versus bees. The Japanese giant hornet is pretty scary. It is a very large insect with adults reaching to almost two inches long and a wingspan of about two and a half inches. This hornet has a painful sting and can sting repeatedly with its venom affecting our nervous system and tissue. These big guys go out to find honeybees, which they will then kill and dismember like a viking raid and bring back their plunder of bee thoraxes and honey to feed their larvae. Wired Magazine calls it a winged T-Rex, an apex predator capable of taking down any insect and incapacitating any giant mammal that gets in its way. Like us, for example. The hornets will send scouts to look for hives, and the scout will leave pheromones to send a message to its buddies. 30 hornets can destroy an entire colony of 30,000 honeybees in less than four hours. So how are the honeybees supposed to fight back? They have come up with an ingenious way to fight back, a group hug. Their stingers are not long enough to penetrate the thick outer skin of a hornet, so honeybees have had to get creative. When a scout comes around and leaves the pheromones, the bees will all stay in the hive until the hornet comes in. Then, they swarm their attacker and form a ball around them, using the vibration of their flight muscles to create heat. A mass of bees can heat an area up to 116 degrees Fahrenheit, which is enough to kill a hornet. They suffocate it like a boa constrictor, preventing the hornet from being able to pump blood around its body. These bee balls need only 30 to 60 minutes to kill the hornet, but they still have to be careful. With only a few degrees separating the temperature needed to kill the other bees around them, the honeybees have adapted specialized brain activity to monitor how hot things are getting. Their ability to know how to carefully increase their temperatures to a specific level is the difference between a cooked hornet and killing their fellow honeybees. While the hornet might take out some fellow honeybees in the process, the hive is saved. While Japanese honeybees have learned this, European honeybees have not, so they are extremely vulnerable to this giant beast. Number 5. Lion versus Hyena Lions and hyenas have been fighting for thousands of years. A lion can take on a hyena for sure, but not a clan of 25 or more of them. In 2015 and 2016, there was a harsh drought that allowed hyenas to become even more dominant in the African bush. Because both species live in the same areas and depend on the same prey for food, it's no surprise that these territorial animals can get aggressive. Everybody is hungry. Hyenas are much smaller and more ragged looking than lions, and they have a reputation for being scavengers who like to steal the kills of other animals. And even though lions are three to four times larger, hyenas often use their cunning methods of teamwork and harassment to intimidate lions and eat the fruits of the lion's labor. Hyenas have powerful jaws, estimated to be equal to one ton of force. But lions, with their power and ability to make aerodynamic moves when in battle, usually win by pouncing on their hyena foes and biting their neck, which usually results in the hyenas suffocating to death. This rivalry runs deep, and there is no love lost between these two species. Number 4. 
Meerkats vs. Birds of Prey Found in the deserts of Africa, meerkats are a carnivorous member of the mongoose family, a small mammal that is known to live and work in groups Meerkats use an extensive and intricate burrow system to move around, which is probably a good thing. It helps keep them safe from predators, including various birds of prey like hawks and eagles who like to snatch them off the ground. Because they are so small, meerkats use their large community known as a gang or a clan to practice safety in numbers. At least one individual is usually on guard to protect the others from attacks. They also dig dead-end tunnels called bolt holes that they can dash into quickly when a bird of prey threatens them. By staying in constant communication using different tones and noises, they can keep everyone in the family informed of where they are and also alert others with different alarm sounds when predators are in the sky or on the ground. With 20 different calls, meerkats have adapted a complex signaling system that helps them to keep the entire clan safe when threatened. See? Communication is key. Number 3. Cougar vs. Wolves and Bears Cougars are native to North and South America. The second largest cat in North America, the cougar is also known as a puma, mountain lion, or panther. Skilled hunters, they will attack all sorts of animals, hiding the carcass after the kill and eating it over the course of a few days. While cougars don't necessarily have any natural predators, that doesn't mean that they don't have problems. In North America, grizzly bears along with wolves compete with cougars for resources, leading to some intense conflicts when they do come face to face. Sharing your territory with other top predators is never easy. In a new study, researchers have found that wolves, grizzly bears, black bears, and jaguars often dominate pumas. However, they do tend to beat out coyotes and maned wolves. Since cougars are solitary animals, having to face an entire pack of wolves does not usually go well. In a study done in Canada's Banff National Park, researchers found that wolves stole prey carcasses from cougars. Interestingly, cougars didn't do the same to the wolves. Even though the cougar is more powerful one-to-one, -one, they do fall victim when they are alone and are overtaken by an entire wolf pack. When competition for food becomes intense, grizzly bears have been known to use their heavy weight to scare cougars away from their kills, and mother bears especially will not hesitate to take a swipe at any threat to her cubs. Cougars or pumas often lose the food that they hunted and have to spend more time and energy hunting more prey. Number 2. Zebras vs. Big Cats African zebras are known for their ability to run between 30 and 40 miles per hour, which comes in handy when being chased by one of their many rivals in the animal kingdom. Everyone from lions to leopards to cheetahs all have it out for them, and big cats are powerful predators with the ability to maul their prey and crush necks with a suffocating bite. Little do they know, though, that the zebra has a secret weapon, the ability to kick their predators with so much force that they can do some serious damage of their own. But that doesn't mean that they are out of the woods. During the seasonal migration between the Serengeti Plains and the local national reserve, migrating zebras unfortunately end up as dinner for Nile crocodiles and many big cats that are just waiting for the weaker ones to fall behind, stumble, break a leg, anything to separate one from the herd. But zebras can also use their unique coloring to their advantage. You might think their black and white stripes would make them easier to find, but because their main predator, the lion, is colorblind, the zebra's stripes blend into the wavy lines of the tall grass. They are even more of a benefit when zebras gather together to protect one another. Instead of being able to pick out each individual zebra, the lion instead sees one big mass moving in unison, confusing them. Lions hunting in pairs and in groups have a success rate of about 30%. Bringing down prey from a herd is difficult, but once one is separated from the group, it's usually only a matter of time before sharp claws and sharp teeth are able to take down a solitary zebra. Number 1. Humpback Whales vs. Orcas Scientist Robert Pittman was on a research expedition in 2009 sponsored by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration when he spotted a very strange sight. After seeing a lone seal on an ice floe being circled by killer whales, he noticed that somebody else was there. A pair of humpbacks were swimming between the seal and the orcas, vocalizing and churning the water up in an attempt to shield the seal and eventually chase the orcas away. After further research and analyzing over 100 interactions between humpbacks and killer whales over a span of 60 years, the biologists found that humpbacks, the only whales known to attack orcas, often band together and travel great distances to interrupt and stop killer whale attacks on other animals. Even more astonishing is the fact that these protective displays usually lasted for at least one hour and could go on as long as seven hours. So how do humpbacks know when an orca is attacking another animal, especially when they are miles away? 
Even though they are stealthy hunters, orcas make a lot of noises and vocalizations when they attack. Somehow, humpbacks are able to recognize these sounds as similar sounds they've heard when orcas attack their own young. They will go to help escort other whales protecting calves, even when they are not their own. Orcas often go after humpback whale calves, and more orca tooth marks are found on humpbacks than any other whale species. While calves do often fall victim to orcas, adult humpback whales can take on an entire pod of orcas. Thanks for watching! Which rivalry do you think is the strongest? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon!